Yeah, what one last fire the cock at the mouth for a rock, I guess, as the set thing as soon as soon as straight away. Yeah, Jarry, Spirit, Jarry, Spirit, Cast, Mokas, yes. That is it. What's up, guys? Welcome back to yet another vlog. So, guys, today we are still in Kampala, Uganda. And today, guys, guess what? I'm in this area which is kind of the most feared. So today we are in an area called Kabalagala. So in case you don't know where the name Kabalagala comes from, Kabalagala is a sweet pancake which is made out of uh, bananas and maize flour which we call Kabalagala here. It's something like an eatable guys. But and another thing that uh, Kabalagala is known for, it's known for prostitution. Okay? So... <laughs> I don't know how this video is going to be. We're just going to move with the flow, but I'm also still here with Harriet. Yeah, guys. So it's time for us to explore mm. Kavalagala. <laughs> Kavalagala. Let's see the Kavalagala. Let's see. Is it a reality? Is a sweet pancake that we can find within here Kavalagala? Yeah. <laughs> so right. guys, um, we are going to be exploring Kavalagala. Yeah. Then we shall go. Kavalagala has different. Uh, uh, portions like areas. areas. We are going to Chukuba Mutwe. Then we are going to Katava. Actually, Katava is the main depot where prostitutes. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Harriet knows this place more than me. So we are going to be touring with her. Yeah. And we are going to be seeing those people who do the prostitution daytime. And of course, we will uh -huh. interact with them. We are going to interact with them. What they are doing really. What yeah. pushes them to do. I know every person. Whatever they do, they don't deserve to do with but exactly. there is a reason behind exactly. everything exactly yeah. so yeah. i feel like maybe something is pushing them to do whatever they are doing that's and you true. know also economy of uganda economy the Nobody. situation <laughs> the situation can force you to do such yeah. crap just yeah. that we don't we don't okay we want to hear from them because some of them have stories. Me, I don't yeah. want to judge people, Harriet. Yeah. Yeah. I want to first hear from people why they started that. It's not always good to it's judge not someone. It's not good to judge someone because we all go through a lot whereby no one knows what I'm undergoing. Yeah, you know? yeah. that's true. Yeah, it's true. All right. All right. Let's, Let's go, go, guys, and show you. So this is Kabalagala, guys. And again, there are a lot of shops in this area. And the forex bureaus. And the forex bureaus are so many here. Yeah. yeah. Get to Uganda, Sebo. Yeah, banks, you know. Hey, so many nationalities here. Yeah. So if you're looking for a Congolese, okay. if you're looking for a guy who is Ethiopian, Eritrean, you come to Kabalagala. Right. <laughs> you have arrived. <laughs> wow. So Harriet, you said you are going to Chikuba Mutwe. We are going to Chikuba Mutwe and Kataba. Kataba. Hey, I love Harriet's accent. <laughs> Kataba. Yeah, Chikuba Mutwe <laughs> and Kataba. Okay. So here in Kabalagala, you find a lot of clubs. You can. Yeah. By the way, it's also known to be. One of the places with a lot of clubs. Club and restaurants, so they are very, very many. You find a lot of clubs here. Yeah, and if you're kind of a person who wants to enjoy nightlife here in Kampala, yeah. Kamalagala, Golobi, and um, uh, where? Kololo. Mm. All these ones are clubs. So that is Capital Park. Capital Park is the biggest here. Yeah. Oh. Hey, yeah. So if you come in Uganda and you want to have fun, come to Kabalagala. Yeah. And the clubs come here are not so expensive. Come and test Kabalagala. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Up to pub. Hey, too many border borders. Let's go to Capital Pub. <laughs> See 
Okay, this is Capital Cup, guys. Up to the other side, behind. Oh, it's so big, like up to that side. Eh? Very big. I think this side they are just doing the renovation and stuff. But if you want, we can pass the other the other side. Eh? So can we go the other side? Okay. Welcome to Kabala Gala. Oh, there's a nice restaurant here. Looks nice. I've tried. Tried microfinance. It's a bank. Oh, we also have a lot of guest houses here. Yeah, of course, you know. <laughs> if you get a customer to test the camera, where are you going to take? <laughs> they are cheap guest houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're even for five thousand. Five thousand. I was told they are five thousand. They are for ten thousand. Wow. Yeah. Hey. But it all depends where. Mm. In Kataba, in um, Kuba Kwe, area. So, most of the restaurants actually are owned by Lutian. nationalities like foreigners. And, and yeah. I don't know actually why they chose Kabala Gala, like most of them. I don't know why they chose you this area. What? We have a university here, Kampala International University in East Africa. Yes. So, it is an international university. Okay. It has a lot of Somali. Mm. Them, once one person occupies the place, mm. they bring others. Okay, yeah, so you guys have had it like from Harriet. The reason why like we have a lot of foreigners here is because um, there are a lot of international schools decide and I guess Kavala Gala is not so expensive when it comes to accommodation. I think that's why like they chose the area. Yeah. Yeah, Badeko. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so where are we? Guys, we are here at Capital Pub Cabal Gala. <laughs> this is the most craziest bar, you know, mm. live show. This is Mira, my runji. I don't know in your country, how do you call this? Do you call it my runji? Do you call it Mira? Harriet, have you ever tested this? I have never tested, but I saw it in Kenya. <laughs> you saw it in Kenya? Yeah, even the Kenya police. I saw it in Kenya. Those guys eat a lot of mirror and mm. for them And mostly in Mombasa. Yes. Mombasa. <laughs> so what does it help? It reduces on alcohol. Yeah, when you keeping on body highly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. How do they eat this? Do you just eat the way how it is or you eat with something? Yeah. I want to test I want to test this one. <laughs> I want to test this one guys. I want to see how it feels. Ah, so you have to use this, eh? <laughs> guys, welcome to the club. Yes, this is the club, life of the club. Uh, club my runes. <laughs> wait. So oh wait, so this is they sell alcohol here? Yeah, so this is a club. Mm. Mm. Tracy, is um what do you sell here? Beer, soft drinks. Soft drinks, beers. And then you have people who eat Mila from mm. here. Mm. Ah, they get from there. Hey guys, so she's telling me when you're eating my runji, you don't need to put a lot of this. This uh, this is like a chewing gum, so you need to put in bits, small small portion. Okay. <laughs> so do I swallow this? No. Oh. 
Oh, you're not supposed to swallow it. No. Okay. Just swallow the liquid. It's not tasty. It does not have a taste. It's really? like um, sour. Green. <laughs> just green. It's just like when you're eating um grass. Grass. Grass yeah. really Tracy. no. It's so like you're eating grass. It's like when you're eating uh the leaves no, for grass. for mango. Uh -huh. Have you ever right. mm -hmm. okay. leaves, leaves for mango? Have you oh, ever tested leaves for mango? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well someone was telling me in Kenya, like I have a friend. I think she comes from that place where they sell them like so much. Mm -hmm. So she was telling me they are cash crops. In their home, mm -hmm. their cash crops like where she stays. Mm -hmm. Hey, and some people say that this one keeps you awake. Eh? It keeps yes. you awake, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why the policemen of Kenya they <laughs> take this. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. like you do this one. Ah. It comes That's you guys have heard. What about the men, the motorcyclists that ride at night? Yes. Eh? Truck drivers. Truck drivers yeah. also take yeah. them. Safari, yeah. Safaris, eh? Safari people. They do because. It keeps you them awake. Mm. Ah. So this is the katava. Mm. Do you know the meaning of the word katava? Mm. Katava is what? Like a place that is full of water? Swampy. Swampy area. So that this area is called katava. Yeah. So guys, as you know, we're in Katava and we want to share with you the experiences of Katava. So um, I met this gentleman here in this club. I told you, Kavalagana, Katava, it's full of clubs, bars, uh, hangout places and all that, and a lot of nationalities. So I met this gentleman here trying to relax. What's your name? My name is uh, James. James. Uh, What's your nationality? I'm Congolese. Oh, I love your dreads. Thank you so much. Nice dreads. What do you put in your hair? Uh, nothing is actually natural. It's natural? Yeah. This is your real hair? That's my green hair. Hey guys. I don't need to. <laughs> Are you serious? Trust me. This is your real hair? Yeah, that's my real hair. You can actually see the growth and everything. Yeah, nice. Oh, wow. Thank it you. reminds me of Jamaicans. <laughs> you know me, I love Jamaicans. Rastas, like, so much. Rastas, huh? Mm. Have you had dress before? No. You should try them. I should try them. They look cute in me. Trust mm. me. <laughs> They always say Jamaican Rastas are so romantic. Yeah, is it true? <laughs> the Rastas are romantic guys. Uh, I don't know, you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I feel like you're a Rasta, you have dreads. Uh, uh, definitely, I don't know. It's my first time to hear about it. That Rasta really? Are romantic. And they are cool and calm people, just like you. Very, very, very calm. humble. So honest, always um, loyal, you know? So it's a culture and a religion that we represent. It's not something that you can actually turn play about. It's, you know, being a Rasta, you don't have to have dreads. You don't have to have dreads being a Rasta. You don't have to have dreads. That's the concept that people have been uh, judging around. You don't have to have dreads actually. You can just be a Rasta the way you are. That's really? Yeah. So if you can become a Rasta mama? Huh? <laughs> yeah, if you go to Rasta Daddy. <laughs> if I get a Rasta Daddy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, how is uh, your name again? Remind me of your name. My name is James. James. Yeah. How is life in uh, this area? Well, this is actually my second time to be over here because uh, I was actually brought here by a Kenyan friend called uh, David. David uh, R.A.P. David. But frontend is not, uh, not around anymore. It's oh. passed away. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. That's life. But life over here is actually, it's amazing if you know how to control yourself. If you know how to, but why are you saying that if you know, because a lot of drugs are happening here. Yeah, there's a lot of drugs around here, trust me. The place is not, um, what can I say, it's welcoming. There's a lot of buying. And uh, if you're not careful about uh, how to take care of your own self, you can end up losing your own self. You can end up losing your own self. So how often do you always come here? Like I said before, it's my second time to it's be here. It's your second time being uh, here. Like after some like your... five years now. And you still remember this place? You have friends around here? Yeah, I have friends around here. Like, like Tracy? Uh, like... Actually, Tracy, it was my second time to meet her. I guess it's my second time to meet her. Because I usually come to play pool table here. Mm. 
quite a little bit of breeze and maybe a little bottle, you know? Two or three bottles and it's enough for the night. It's enough for the night. Mm -hmm. Okay. What mainly goes on here? I mean, you see all these people coming over here for the vibe. I can't explain, but you can only see. It's a place that. of the vibe. It's a place of the vibe. No. Like if you want to relax, you know, you want to pass time after a very difficult day or job or something like that. Yeah. Pass by, have some vibe, go back home. Okay. More of nightlife. Nightlife? Yeah, nightlife. More, yeah. Of nightlife. More of nightlife. More of nightlife, yeah? Um, definitely, because uh, I've never been here tonight. I've never been here. You always be here at daytime. I always be here during daytime. That's my hours done. I go back to my daily steps. In case someone wants to, to come to Kavala Gala, which places would you recommend them to visit? Yeah. I'll actually advise them to visit the safe side, which is alongside the road. Alongside the road. Yeah, so if it is not the road, it's not safe? When you get into the interior, because you can actually tell. You, know, you can actually tell that uh, it's not safe. It's not that safe. You know, everybody be looking at you like you know, you're their next yeah. target. I think I saw it when we were entering with her because they were, there's a people are looking at us and what we're holding. And hey, me, I was like, hey, are we in the safe place? <laughs> but me, I'm moving with a girl who is very strong. How read that? Me, I am. <laughs> guys, me, I am a, a risk taker. She's a risk taker indeed. Definitely like me, I like taking risks. You know, it's not everybody like. Um, who will believe that I come over here? They'll be like, I don't belong here. Like, everybody knows that. Yeah, yeah, someone can tell he doesn't belong here. First of all, he has good spoken. I was even shocked, like, finding him here. He has good spoken, he speaks so well. And you, you allowed us to film you, like, on camera, which is not usual with everyone. Someone can be like, why are you taking me? Why are you filming me? You know? Even Tracy, like, so frequently. Before taking this, I have to ask you a reason. Like, why? Wow. I came to the Senate school. Yes, yes, content, yes. It's definitely gonna help other people out there who take the book. We are YouTubers. Yeah, we are YouTubers. That's why we are doing, we do vlogs like, and all that. I also do the same thing. Too. Oh, you yeah, have a YouTube too. channel? I definitely have a YouTube channel. Oh, oh. Have tell us your name. Maybe so you should tell us your YouTube name. Tell people to come and subscribe to your channel. You can just go to James, James Arubas, you know. How do you uh, spell the name Arubas? Aru is called uh, A A W. That's it. Oh, oh. Alright, so go and check him out. So when it comes to tourists, would you um, advise them to come in Kavala Gala? Because I feel like it is not like when someone when someone uh, takes this, you oh, and most of our subscribers watch our videos. Always tell us, you guys, tell us more about Kavala Gala. That's why we did this video today for you guys to know what happens in Kavala Gala. So would you advise tourists to come in Kavala Gala? Well, first of all, I will definitely advise everybody that like, Kavalaga is open for everybody. You know, it's actually open for everybody. But I will advise everybody to actually be safe when you come over here. You have to actually be safe. You know, look around yourself. You know, just don't go out there and feel like you know when you're away, you're away from home, just know it's never safe. Everywhere, you know? when you leave home. Yes, that's true. You have to be. Tight with your bag, with, your, with your bag and everything. Yeah. You no, know, like first of all, so I'm also a tourist. Like I like touring around. Nice. Like, we move around countries because uh, you want to like something like my, my fifth country. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's your fifth country. Yeah. How many countries are we going to? I'm going to something like five countries. Five countries. Five Which countries. is? Five, five countries. Uganda included. Uganda, Kenya, South Sudan, Congo, Tanzania. Uh, I've, been also, I've also been in Zambia before. Oh, uh, in Zambia. Zambia. Yeah, and Angola too. Oh, nice. Angola. So wow, like, did you visit the Himba tribe? The Himba tribe? Mm. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't visited them yet, but uh, trust me, I'll definitely do that. So. When it comes to Kabbalah Gala, yes. um, they've, they've heard of stories of prostitution and all that. Have you uh, experienced it here? Is that what you see here? Well, um, like a lot of ladies selling themselves on the streets, even daytime. Well, thank you so much for asking me this question again. Um, like, uh, once again, I'm glad that you asked me this question. Yes. Yes, it's true. It's definitely true. I've seen, I've witnessed it, and I've seen it. I was actually sitting there. You know where you where you only sit I met uh, couples of ladies coming close. You know, trying to have some good time, but I was like, no, it's okay. Oh, so the ladies were approaching you here. Yeah, the ladies were approaching. Okay, they're trying to look. To, they are trying to find a way to survive. Trying to find something to put on top of the table. So they're, they're like fishermen, you know. Oh. And so you go to the boat. You just have to throw your net. And boom, that's it. Like it's actually very active. It's actually very active out here during day and night.
what, what do you think forces those ladies to do that? Um, because I believe myself, I believe it's not proper for someone who has grown up and then they end up wasting their lives just like that, like selling their bodies to earn a living. I'll try to I'll try to answer that with a few that I, I think uh, it's, um, it's causing that. Basically, first of all, I think it's because of the um, lack of employment. Lack you know? of employment. That should be one of the one of the, one of the most uh, major thing that is pushing them to come over here. And then others will be definitely uh, um, discipline. You know, discipline. I think at school they didn't actually teach them how to like keep themselves. You know. Lack of uh, social labor and stuff like that in the community, in the, I mean, sorry, in the society. It's actually pushing them to, to come down here and do this kind of Because I wasn't really surprised. There's even a kid of 16. Kids of 16, 17 are actually responsible for themselves. No, I don't actually think whether it's proper for them to be on the street selling themselves because, you know, they're too young to be here. You know? As a lady, you know, you're supposed to like understand your value, you know? Self-respect is the most important thing. It's the most important thing. So, because you don't have that, you never know where you can end. Maybe I get pregnant, or get infected, or any kind of STDs. That's you know? true. HIV. You know? HIV, chlamydia, all those kind of stuff. That's what it's always safe. It's always, it's always good to like, you know, let it be safe. If you cannot maintain them, let it be safe at least. So which advice would you give to the ladies that sell themselves? Is there any advice you would give them? I'm like, you know, it's, it's never too late, you know? It's never too late to like, make a U-turn, change. You can be a very, you know, you can be a really important person to the society. There are a lot of people who actually need you about that. And being on the street is actually never safe. It's, it's not something for, for you, you know? Like, you can actually keep yourself busy with something. I'm very sure uh, there are a lot of skills that you can learn out there, you know? There are a lot of skills that you can learn out there. Tailoring, uh, filmmaking, uh, cooking, catering, those things are out there. You, know? you can even go and sell uh, these small... You know some people be like, I cannot wake up in the morning and then I go on the streets and then sell like, like the vendors like tomatoes. Or anything. Even those things can, guys can give it uh, like something to eat at home instead of just going out. And, and I think what causes that is that some people undermine jobs. That's why they think prostitution is simple. I'm so sorry to say this, but guys, if you have hands, if you have legs, if you have energy, go out, hustle, you get the money. Prostitution is not the best advice. Okay? That's, yeah. that's actually right because, um, you know, each of us will give us a talent. You know, will give us a talent. Through that talent, if you discover it, you can actually gain a lot. You're, like, you're not alone. You know, try to find people to advise you. And, you know, find right mentors. You know, find right mentors. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. Definitely. Um, I'll always be. In case you guys need me, I'll definitely be available. Oh wow! Okay. My my help will always be a very good use to people. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for being nice to us. And guys, please go and check him out on his YouTube channel. Use gems. Our buzz. So, guys, uh, we have someone else on uh, today's um, sit down and she's called Tracy. Tracy, how are you? How are you glad? Be fit. She, she means she's fine. When she says I'm fit, like, she's fine, she's doing great. So I found Tr Tracy here and um, I was asking how much she's trying to take because we're seeing she's, she's smoking, taking weed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, she's saying what, what she takes gives her peace, peace of mind. She feels like it gives her like peace of mind. But um, uh, how long have you been doing this recently? Long time. Long time. How old are you? It's okay. I'll go back. Okay, so she's uh, 24 years. She's still young. But me, I feel like what she does, because even she gave us this, she was showing us this, what they call Mila. This one here. This one, they call it Mila. 
So she says they take it to gain the energy. She takes the weight to just relax. That's how she lives her life. But me, I feel like she's a young girl. Tracy, how is life here? How is life in Kavana Gali? So bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. How long have you stayed in Kavana Gali? About 21. 21. Three years now. Three years now. Okay. This is your business here. You work here. It's your business. Yes, work here. Oh, you just work here. Huh? Okay. How is business doing? Good, bad. On a daily basis, do you always get uh, clients? Like a lot of clients. Which kind of clients do you always get here? Yeah, but damn you. Bye, bye, Zekunya. Bye, bye, Zekunya. <laughs> okay, she's trying to be those ones who don't understand Uganda. What she's meaning is um, she gets drunkards who always come here to drink. What about these ones also who smoke weed? They always come here. Do you allow smoking weed in here? Because I'm seeing for you, you do. Because most of the clubs, they don't allow smoking weed where there are people. But I'm seeing Tress is doing it here. The <laughs> Because I know it is illegal. Yeah. So if they get you, what if they get you smoking weed? Don't they get you? Come back with them. Come back with them means you're gone. Yeah. Like we are going to cook. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, don't you think this is going to like affect your life? You think it's good? I don't think it's good. Like I told you, the Kanagati can't be me. So um, I also wanted to ask you about the, the prostitution because um, Kavanagala is known to be a street of prostitutes. Do you always get them here like clients who are prostitutes and they are trying to find men? No, okay. How is it? I'm okay, hi. Where do you? Hi. Baby. What time do they always come? From 7 till morning. From 7 till morning and they're here looking for men. This place Why feels yes. It gets full of ladies. Do even white men come here to look for them? White men? Ah. I get Okay, so what she's saying is that also every race, because I told you Kabalaga is full of nationalities, every race comes here, even the white people come here to look for ladies, which is not bad, but you have to be careful. That's the same thing she said, that it's a ghetto, it's a ghetto, it's full of weird people, people who smoke, people who take a lot of drugs, so you have to be careful. Yeah, yeah that's what she's trying to say. Because I feel like it's a bad thing for someone to sell their bodies. You think it's bad or good? So it's a situation. What she's saying is uh, the reason why uh, she thinks those ladies uh, do the prostitution is because um, they're just trying to get something small, like the same way you go out and work. But then they come even though they give them some like how much how much do you think they already start from giving them? They have a standard price. Okay, they have a standard. They didn't get a standard, but that's the other thing. The standard price is five thousand. That's so little. Okay, what she's saying is that some, some of them don't mind if you give them uh, a drink like uh, alcohol, a beer. Okay, then what she's saying is that uh, others you just book for them a room where they can sleep for the night. It's, it's all the same. They don't mind like so meaning they're not so expensive. That's really bad. It's not good so I'm here to advise you to stop doing what you're doing because in the future you're going to get repercussions 
of what you're doing. Right now, you see that you're enjoying your weed, you're taking your mirror very well, but it's going to affect you in the future. So I believe you can change. It's never too late. You can change, right? <laughs> but you can change, right? I believe in change. You can change. If let's say I be like, okay, now I'm going to be your friend. I'm going to be helping you. Can you change because of me? Can you change? Yeah. So what she's saying is that if someone comes and changes that from her or changes her life, then she can leave whatever thing she's doing. But apart from that, she's not leaving. But me, I feel like it's not healthy, guys, for someone to take drugs. In the future, you're going to get from her from it, especially the way. That's what's so strong. The lifestyle that you live in, I'm the kind of lifestyle here is tough. It's very, very tough. Okay. 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 At least now we are not so tired. We are not 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 tired. We are me, yeah, I don't smoke. I've never done that. Though right now I've been a passive smoker. She was the active smoker. But because I've been asking her what she has been doing, of course I perceived a little bit, which is not good. I feel like it's not good. You should stop. Okay? Yeah, okay now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I promise. I'll stop. <laughs> okay, Tristan. Well, I'm going to say that. I'm you're looking for money and uh, you want to have well, your life. Where it is, I'm going. Where it is. Hey, but I can see you're smart. Trust it. <laughs> you're smart. You should even have a designer bag. Hey. Hey. Yeah. That's nice. Thank you. Mm. Okay, Tristy. Thank you for sharing with us. Hi. Yo. Wagwan. Yeah, walk one rasta for the coca the more for a rocks I guess yes yes yeah to tenga soon as soon as straight away. Yeah Jari spell rasta jar respect cast more cars. That is it. I'm okay, hi. Baby. So guys, after having a one to one with Tracy, she decided to take us to one of the areas where they always sell themselves in the evening but we found some of the ladies were already here waiting for the men that are going to take them in the evening and those are some of the gentlemen they always sit with in the evening hours to take the weed to take the mirror that is how they live here in Kabalagala and the lady seated over there is one of the prostitutes that sells herself in Kabalagala so basically guys this is how these people live their lives and they were telling us how they survive in Kabalagala so guys yeah that is it for today we shall see you in the next one we love you all bye bye